Hey guys, Dr. Bitz here with another fantastic organic chemistry video. And today we're going to talk about ionic bonding. Now, there's two types of bonding, two major types of bonding, ionic and covalent. Now, there's different types of covalent bonds. We're going to get, we're going to get into that in a minute. But let's start with ionic. Now, oops, sorry about that, guys. Let me go back. Uh, there we go. Come on now. Here we go. There we go. Now, first of all, ionic bonding is not covalent. <laughs> They're not the same. They're different. Okay. And covalent bonding, we like to say that electrons are quote unquote sharing their electrons. Um, personally, I like to say that uh, in an ionic bond, the atoms are stealing electrons from each other. And in a covalent bond, they're trying to steal from each other, but they're not being quite successful at it. Okay. So that's kind of how I look at it. Now, in an ionic bonding, generally speaking, it's a metal to a non-metal bonding. Now, it doesn't have to be a metal to a non-metal. It can be a polyatomic to a polyatomic. Okay? It's a cation to an anion. So you have to have a cation and you have to have an anion. Now, the cation could be a metal. It may not be. For example, NH4. That's a cation. It can make ionic bonds. Most definitely can make ionic bonds. In fact, NH4... CL, ammonium chloride, very, very common, very common, and it's not covalent. Now, the nitrogen and the hydrogens are bonded together covalently, but the, but the ammonia and the chloride are bonded together ionically, because an ionic bond is an attraction for a cation to an anion. That's what an ionic bond is, okay? Covalent bonding, on the other hand, is a quote-unquote sharing of electrons. Now, I like to think of it as an attempt at theft. They're trying to steal from each other. They're trying to take each other's electrons. Why? They're trying to fill their valence shells. Why? Because that's a stabilizing effect. I didn't say stable. There's lots of things that have a filled octet that aren't stable, like fluorine, for example. It's not stable. It will react with tons of stuff, but it has a filled octet. Yes, it stabilizes it, <laughs> but it's not stable. It can still react with a lot of things, okay? Now, when you have a covalent bond, there's two types. There's Polar and nonpolar covalent. Nonpolar covalent has no charge separation. That means there is the, the sorry, I hit my mic stand. The hydrogen on this side and the hydrogen on that side have the equal number of electrons. Okay, they're sharing the electrons almost perfectly. Like they both are happy. They sing songs together. It's great. It's nonpolar covalent. Now it doesn't mean hydrogen is not reactive. It's really reactive, but it's nonpolar covalent because it doesn't have a charge separation. Okay, there is no slight positive charge on, there is no slight positive here, slight negative here. It just doesn't happen. All right, it's just not how it works. So now, here we have what's called a polar covalent bond. Now, here we do have charge separation. The chlorine will be delta negative, the carbon will be delta positive. Now, the delta doesn't mean anything but partial, it just means slight or partial charge. Okay, so this chlorine here is delta negative or slightly negative. This carbon here is delta positive or slightly positive, which means it's not a true positive charge. It's not a cation. It's not an anion, but they have that charge. They're slightly negative, slightly positive. All right, now let's get into our first foray into drawing Lewis structures. Now, it's very simple. I always start out by drawing my atoms with all their valence electrons. Now, if you don't know how many valence electrons these atoms have, simply look at your periodic table, okay? Simply look at your periodic table. Now, notice how the carbon has four valence electrons. So I'm going to start with it. I'm going to start drawing with it, and I'm just going to put it right here. Yes, I know my process is a little long. And I know it's a little drawn out. <laughs> no pun intended. But it works. It works every time. Now, I always leave my hydrogens till the very, very end. Why? Because I can put them anywhere. Okay? Now, that being said, I shouldn't have said anywhere because you guys are going to start putting them in random places. They can go anywhere you find a single electron. Okay? So right here, there's a single electron. Hydrogen can go there. No problem. You can go here, here, or here. Anywhere you find a single electron, a hydrogen atom can go there. Now, look. I have one, two, three, four single electrons. That's good. So I'm just going to put all four hydrogens around it. Hydrogen here. Now, notice 
by drawing this one bond here. This is a single bond. That's a single bond, and it has two electrons. A single bond counts for two electrons, guys. Two, not four, two. Not one, two. Okay? Every single bond is two electrons. So I'm going to keep drawing. Notice the hydrogen now, in both of these cases, the hydrogens each have two valence electrons. If you count this bond as two, hydrogen has two. Count this bond as two, hydrogen has two. Hydrogen doesn't want any more bonds. Hydrogen can only have one bond. Write that down. Hydrogen ever gets, only ever gets one bond. If you give hydrogen two bonds, I'm going to mark it wrong. I'm going to give you zero. Hydrogen gets one bond. Never more than one. Okay, good. Now this carbon has two, four, five, six. So the carbon doesn't have an octet yet. Two, four, five, six. So now, we've used this hydrogen already. Let's put another hydrogen out there. There we go. Two, four, six, seven. So the carbon's getting more electrons every time it makes a bond. This is why atoms bond, because they want to have an octet. They want to have the same electron configuration as their nearest noble gas. Okay? Put another hydrogen on there. So we've used all the hydrogens and all the carbons. Two, four, six, eight. So now this carbon here in the center has an octet. So this is the correct Lewis structure for CH4 or it is a correct Lewis structure. Now, some molecular formulas will have numerous correct uh, Lewis structures. As long as you don't violate the octet rule, as long as everybody has an octet or a filled valence shell, do it in the term for carbon, that is, you'll be good. All right, let's do nitrogen. So nitrogen has five valence electrons. Hydrogen, of course, has one. Start with nitrogen. Bring them out here to the right so we can use them. So nitrogen only has five electrons so far. Let's give them some more. There's the hydrogen there. So now nitrogen has two, three, four, five, six. All right. It's getting more and more electrons as he makes more and more bonds. Now let's just finish them off. There we go. There you go. There you have it. Now notice right here. This is called a lone pair. And a lone pair obviously counts for two, two electrons. So this is two, four, six, eight. So the nitrogen in the center has, a, has an octet. It's completely satisfied, doesn't want any more. Now, for these last two, I'm going to leave them up to you to do. I think all of you can handle this right now. These are just some very simple, basic Lewis structures. Nothing to them, okay? I hope you don't struggle with these. I think these are fairly simple. If you can't do them, let me know, and we'll talk about it privately in office hours. We'll get you straightened out for Lewis structures. But these are some basic, easy ones that everybody should know how to do. All right, so let's go over some stuff again. Non-bonding electrons. Again, these are called lone pairs. Now, you'll notice patterns here. You'll notice patterns. Nitrogen with no charge, with no formal charge, always has one lone pair. Oxygen with no formal charge always has two lone pairs. Halogens with no formal charge have one, two, three lone pairs. So these are just common patterns you're going to see. So if nitrogen or oxygen doesn't have a formal charge, it's not, if the nitrogen is not positive or negative, the oxygen is not positive or negative, it's going to have one lone pair for nitrogen and two for oxygen. You're going to see these patterns over and over again. Now be careful. If they have a formal charge, things get different. We're going to get into formal charges here, in a, maybe not in this video, but we're definitely going to get into it soon. Okay? Multiple bonding. Yes, atoms can make multiple bonds in order to achieve the octet. Now, there are single bonds, which I've already shown you, and I'll show you one on here again. Uh, here's a single bond right here. It counts for two electrons. This is a double bond. And that counts for four electrons. And there are triple bonds as well. And uh, there's no quadruple bonds that I know of, but there are triple bonds, and they count for six. So there isn't a triple bond shown here, but for example, carbon monoxide. 
this is a triple bond. And that is six electrons. Okay, so there's single, double, and triple covalent bonds. So far, so good, guys. Dipole moments. Uh, I guess we'll end it here, and we'll pick up on the next video. Uh, we'll start with dipole moments and electronegativity. I want, again, I'm trying to keep these videos rather short so that you're not completely overwhelmed by hour-long YouTube videos. Um, I'll do my best to do that for you guys. I can't promise you it'll be every time, though, but I'll do my very best, all right? So now, guys, I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. See you soon.